All right, so I posted just a few days ago a picture of my visor foil method and everybody was really interested and this is my first time ever doing a tutorial so bear with me. I really suck at this. Um, but I'm going to show it on my best friend Adida. I'm not actually going to be highlighting her hair because she likes a balayage but she um, agreed to be my little uh, mannequin head over here. So first off, I'm going to pretend like my two, my two things, oh my, this is going to be hard, but I'm going to have two different um, things. They're both cholesterol cream. I don't, if you have never seen it, um, you can just, it, you can get it at Sally's. It's really thick. It's a really nice conditioner just to use to hold up the foils. So this is what it looks like. Whoa, I'm dropping things. Oh my gosh, and it was a light bulb. Okay, well, it didn't break, but this is cholesterol cream from Sally's. All right, so I cut first, so I'm gonna be doing this on wet hair, and I know that I'm gonna be breaking the rules, but that's just how it is. So um, I learned this, a lot of the ladies at my salon use this uh, trick or this technique. Um, there's no real sectioning. I just start with all the hair combed back. And I'm gonna try to talk my way through it. If you guys have any questions, I'll try to answer it afterwards. Um, so here I go. Okay. okay. Short people problems. So I have to have my clients start off with their head kind of back and up. So I just comb back first. It's so much easier to use this on wet hair than it is dry. You could try it. I wouldn't suggest it. Um, but this is going to be my pretend cholesterol, and this is going to be my pretend bleach, or whatever color you think it would be. Um, so here I go. First I start off by holding back the hairline and just painting all across this hairline with cholesterol. I kind of usually warn my clients that it's kind of cold. So you can, if you want, warm it up on your hand before. I'm not that nice. So. Okay, start off by folding the foil this way. So I kind of have a little less than halfway folded. And I use the head to kind of get that dip in my foil. I use the thin end and I try to make sure that I have a nice clean line there. So I start off and I just put it and press it right against the hairline. So as you can see, it goes right up to it. Your first foil is always going to be cholesterol. Unless asked otherwise, I have done bleach first. I prefer to have cholesterol first because it's a little barrier for that front piece. You just kind of shape it to give it like a nice curved look. Sorry, Adita, I'm going to kind of show like this. You're like, stop. <laughs> All right. So first, have your client start off with their head up. You just take this first section. You can do a really clean section. You can do it little or big. It totally depends on how blonde you want it, basically. So I paint the cholesterol directly on the scalp. So every time that I am doing a cholesterol, which is my skip, I'm going to be painting directly on the scalp because it kind of gives it a nice little barrier and it helps hold the foils. So once I get, I did all across the hairline. As you can see, all the way, and I just painted it directly on the hairline. And then that's when I take my next foil, fold it again, use the head as like a little molding for your foil, and then I just hold it and I just make sure that this is really close to the hairline here. So I'm just stacking these. So now I would do a highlight. So I'm going to use my purple bowl. And I just kind of put the bleach across here like this and I paint it all the way. If they are only getting like this tiny bit of root, just only do a tiny bit at the very end. It just kind of helps hold the hair. This is where I can do a weave. So I'm going to weave this. You can do whatever you want though. If you want to weave, if you want to skip, you can do whatever. So 
I would either, if they're blonde already, like let's say her root starts here, I'm just going to paint it on the root and I can keep it just like that. So here is another weave and I'm going all the way across the hairline and I'm just pretend touching up her root. If you feel like you're afraid of it bleeding, sometimes if I get too close or something, I will just put a little bit of my cholesterol on the scalp right where I put the bleach. Just like right at the very edge. You don't have to, but you can. I don't always. Holding again, using my head as a mold and putting it directly there. As you can see, it's meeting up perfectly with my hairline. So now I have two foils on there. Well, technically three, I think. No, just two. Okay, so you can just see it along the hairline. Now this is going to be my skip, and I'm just bringing the cluster all across. And you can do as little. Sometimes if I want my really blonde kinds, I will only do what I weaved out. So it'll only be like a tiny bit of hair. And that's for the girls that want to be like super blonde. So for time reasons, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do a thicker skip here. Painting it all the way to the root with my cholesterol. Okay, so now I painted all the way to the root, pulling my foil again and using it as a mold. And you just keep doing this, you can do whatever pattern you want. Once it starts, so like right now I'm kind of getting to a point where I feel like it's not meeting up perfectly. So what you do is you pivot the foils so it goes with the shape of the head. So now I'm going to push this forward a little bit so I'm not getting it all. And so it's just perfectly up in that front hairline. So yes, it's not meeting there on the edge, but it's meeting up here on the top. And it's not meeting on the other edge either. So that's why I am only doing this top section. So now I'm just going to paint the fake bleach here on this little edge just on the top where it's meeting, and I'm going to weave or you can slice, you can do whatever you want, pull it forward, touch up the root. Now let, let's say this piece was dark and I wanted to pull it through, I can just pull it, flip it, it's really easy actually once you get the hang of it, it's just kind of messing it up and just making sure that you get it in there really good. So if you take a long time, or if your client's really light, you can use it, start off with a smaller developer and like start off with five or ten volume if you are, feel like you're going to take a long time. I would definitely suggest doing this on a mannequin a couple times before you actually do it. Um, so you start off lower and as I have to mix, I make sure that I mix a higher developer every time unless I feel really unsure about it and I'll just do ten until like the very back. Um, so when you only weave the top section, you can only skip that much. You don't want to skip all the way across the hairline. You want to just get where you foiled before. So, and I just, oh yeah. I also, I paint when I don't have any sections here, like being weaved, I will just paint the cholesterol here to give me a little extra hold so that the foils stick together nicely. So I just did that top section. Now I'm going to see if it matches. It's matching up all the way on this side and all the way on this side. That means I can go back to doing completely across. So I'm going to go back to my fake bleach. I'm going to slice this time for time purposes. Paint all the way. You can get as close as you want. I like to leave just like a little edge right here just to make sure that I am not um, going to have any bleeding which is like what you would do with a packet anyways. So if you end up bringing through a lot of your foils, like if somebody comes in and they're dark and they want to be blonde, you want to make sure that you are evening out the hair across the whole foil so you're not leaving it in one spot because if you do it just gets heavy. You just want to make sure that you're like weaving. I'll show you now, even though this is supposed to be a cross draw. Just want to make sure that this is all the way to the hairline. 
So if you want to bring this through, I'm just kind of trying to even it out so it's not all in one place. So then this section here is going to be just in this part, maybe a little bit here, just so I'm not just piling it all in one spot. meeting up every time that with my cholesterol. So if you go all the way with the bleach, then you want to go all the way with the cholesterol. So now I'm doing bleach again, and it's going to match up good again this time. So I'm going to do a bleach again. I just keep checking when I put down my foil if I wanted, um, if it wouldn't meet. So it would, the root would be close. So I just want to make sure that the root is close, So because if it's not, then it's not going to look good. So. You just want to keep on making sure that it's meeting all the way to the hairline. So I'm weaving right now. And it is important to have a certain um, grip on the brush because you need to be able to weave it. So I don't know if you can tell what I'm doing here, but I just weave it this way, pick it up, paint on. Weave it again this way, pick it up, paint it on. So it's a little different than when you're doing a touch up. You just have to kind of get used to the way you grip it. Just a little different. You'll eventually get it. Just it takes a second to get used to the grip on it. Basically, I'm going to be doing the same thing until my root does not, if the foil doesn't go all the way to the parting where you sectioned out here. And then you just do the centers to mohawk section again. And it does get it all just by the way you pivot. So now I'm going to be going this way. Sometimes, like I could tell. Once you get used to it, you can tell when your foil is going to meet and when it's not. So I'm already pivoting, so here I am. It's, you just have to make sure you're pivoting, because if you don't, then you end up with a stack on top. It doesn't look good. So you can do whatever pattern you want to. Like if you want to add a low light, you can do that too. Um, so I sit, when I do a low light, if I want like my client to be pretty blonde. And since I just did the um, mohawk section, just so you know, I'm just doing the cholesterol just behind the mohawk section. I'm not going all the way down because I don't have a foil there. You want to skip behind every single highlight that you have so that if you don't, then you're going to have blonde right next to each other and it'll look too blonde in that one spot. So still pivoting. Sometimes it gets like a little wider. You can see where it kind of meets up and where it doesn't. I'm going to try to show you. So I'm going to show you where it connects. Um, it's not connecting there. It's connecting here, and it's not connecting there either. So I am just going to keep going with my pivot. Just behind where I foil. I'm doing bigger skips than I usually would, especially for my blonde clients. So if you want them really blonde, you just where your cholesterol is, where your skip is, you're only taking out in between the weave that you left out, if that makes sense. So another weave. If you want like a more natural look, you go for a finer weave. If you want a little heavier look, you go for a thicker, heavy weave. It just depends on what kind of look I'm going for. You can kind of see where it's meeting up. It's the same on the other side. So I'm just gonna leave out just that bit and just skip. So 
now it's starting to meet up all the way, and now I can go to a regular weave. Everyone that I do this foil on is always like, oh my gosh, this is the coolest thing ever. It's faster, it's neater, it's more even. You don't have any spots that are left out. It's really cool. I was really glad that I learned this. I actually learned this out of school through the ladies that I work with. I probably did it five or six times before on a mannequin. Then I actually did it on an actual client. I was also a lot newer. When I learned it, I was probably less than a year into my uh, license. So I know it's not gonna fit now, so I'm going back to my pivot. So I'm pretending more like I'm doing a root touch up so I don't have to bring it all the way through. If you guys have questions or anything else that you want answered, um, I can try to show you again if I miss it on the video. Still pivoting here. All the way to the root. Every time that you do a skip, you paint all the way to the root to kind of protect the hair just in case of a bleed. And make sure you tell your clients when they're processing, do not touch the oil because I've had times where a client, you know, thinks it's bothering them or something. If they want to have an itch or anything, they move it and it ends up messing up the foil and it's hard to get back into its spot. So I always try to tell my clients, don't touch your foil. Sometimes they listen and sometimes they don't, but most of the time it works out just fine. So I'm getting just like a little lower just because that's where it's meeting to. So just you just gotta see where your foil meets up to. Don't forget this part by using the head because it actually it makes it so much easier putting it on. Um, just you'll see when you do it. it makes it so much easier. So as you can see, you can start to see the visor effect, how it's just slowly pivoting and eventually it's going to go all the way back. So you can get a full head of highlights. You can do a partial, you can stop here, you can stop down here, and you can stop at the very end of the hairline too. So whatever your client wants. If I ever get it like not close enough, I'll just push the foil back to where I want. So sometimes you get a jagged edge and I just flip it to the other side so I have a nice clean edge. Or sometimes it's torn and I'll just throw that one out unless the other side is good. I always end up painting right here, just so you guys know I'm like an artist over here. I always wipe it off at the end because I just usually can't help myself. So it's meeting all the way now, so I'm going to go back to my full. So anywhere 
where I foil or do a bleach, I'm going to have to do all the way across for my skip and cholesterol. I'm going to start doing a little bigger just because I don't want this video to take a million hours. You want to try to get a nice clean line. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you don't want it super jagged either. Going back to my pivot. There isn't really rhyme or reason to the pivot. It's just where your foil doesn't meet. I now know where I have to pivot on the head to get it. And if you don't, if you can't decipher right away where you need to pivot, all you have to do is put your foil down and see if it meets all the way. So, like now I can probably go back to the regular, even though I almost want this like a little closer. You want it as close as you can, because this foiling method will get you really close to the scalp, really good for the blondies, really good for short hair, because you don't have to try to fold up a piece and hold it for the little, um, little hair. I guess I can kind of show you now. You can kind of see where it's not meeting up completely here, and that's why I kind of just shift it forward so that it lays perfectly flat here on the top. That's how you know when you need to pivot. If it starts like sitting up really thick here, that means that you're not pivoting enough.
So when I get to the back, I start holding onto the foils or onto the uh, hair to kind of keep it calm because if I don't, it's really hard to get a good weave in there. So if you hold it down, it just kind of helps. Make sure you're not forgetting to put that little extra cholesterol here because that's what kind of keeps it all together. I'm obviously not using these like I should be, so don't really pay attention to what color bowl I'm using because I'm using the same one for both. But the weave is obviously supposed to be my highlight and the slice is my skip. So now once you get to the back, you want to follow the hairline. So you're going to slowly start bringing these down just by pivoting. You'll kind of see what I'm doing as I'm doing it, but just so you can kind of see what, what my ultimate goal is, because it's going to end up sitting more like back like this. See how that is meeting up perfectly to our hairline, where my parting is? You want to make sure that that's that close when you're doing it. This is my weave. So, when you get to this back, it is a little harder to break through, but really not bad. So, because of this, how sticky the product is, it really doesn't make it hard at all. But you just want to make sure that you're bringing it all the way across so that it's not just sitting in one big clump in the middle. You just want to make sure that you're matching it in good, especially with like a low light. I mean, same with any other highlight or foil that you do, you do want to make sure that's really saturated. Um, just so it doesn't get um, partially saturated and look bad. You know how if somebody has like a, a reseed in the front, like how it's down further here and less here and then more here. When you're doing it, if it if this hair does not reach, do not foil it. You're only foiling what's reaching your foil. So make sure that um, yeah, you're not break, trying to bring back like this hair to meet up to that front foil. So just be cautious of that. You don't want to do that. It'll look weird. It won't be all the way to the root. Yada yada. So 
Basically, I'm getting to this uh, bottom section. You can choose to leave this out if, if you want. On my really blonde ones, I just foil around it anyways. So even if it doesn't um, meet up all the way, like she's, her hairline comes down further here like most people. So I'm just gonna only do those sections that reach. So I'm just going to leave these ones out, but to finish the foil, I will bend up these right here so that the back ones don't fall off. And then I will clip up this front section of hair here, just so it's out of their face and they can breathe freely. Um, if it bothers them, you can clip it up in the middle or beforehand, but you can just clip this up. If you want to put it under heat, which I know some people are against that, I do it all the time, so mm. And um, you just put a plastic cap over it. I just kind of put it on this like back section. Um, none of the bleach is out, so it's not really that big of a deal to have it or not. I do it anyways, just in case. I don't want to dry out any bleach. Um, and then to take it off, honestly, this is the easiest foil to take out. Um, I'm going to take it out right now just so you can see it. So um, I would usually be doing this at the bowl, but since we're not um, actually foiling, I'm just going to take it out. Oh, wait, hold on. I'm going to show you how to check your foils too so you can see. So if I check in the back and I know that this is pulled really well, you can kind of check to see. You want to make sure you don't move it too much so that you're not sliding the foils. Um, but I will pick up, so I'm going to move this. I, mean, I would like kind of pick up in this front area and just kind of slowly look and see how my foil is doing. You just want to be really careful that you're not like just ripping it up or moving them really far because if you move one then one one another one will move and yada yada so I'm not very good at this <laughs> but um, to take it out basically you can just kind of grab a few foils and just bend it back and take it out this way you don't have to unfold it you can just kind of pull there's usually always some left sometimes I'll just take it out like a few at a time we just kind of So, I wish I could show you um, the after results if I was actually foiling her, um, but I didn't want to make her any blonder than she is for now. Um, so, yeah. Um, I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Um, if you guys have any questions, you can definitely comment, private message me. You can do whatever you want. I will be try my best to answer any questions that you have. Um, if I didn't touch base on something, just let me know and I can try to um, explain it in another video if it's not easily explained on a comment. Um, I'm really glad that you guys were interested in my foiling method. I love it. This is called the visor method. Everybody loves it. So it's really good for those blondies. Um, really good if you're doing someone's full head. And just make sure that when you're doing it, just make sure you're starting out with a lower developer if it's taking you longer for the first couple times. Um, I started off really low at first because there's you can't take out these front foils until um, the back is done. So that is one of the downsides to this method, but that is why I try to make up in that department by using a lower developer in the front and moving higher in the back. So hopefully they'll... Um, I guess process in a similar timing. Um, I think that's it. I'm Cassie, by the way. I didn't say my name. Um, thank you guys. Bye.